Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Uh, let's talk about the day that uh, I enjoy Escobar those went stories, down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll start it off. That day, yeah. I was sent by the ambassador, U.S. ambassador, sent me on a that there was an informant who called him that he only wanted to talk to me. That Escobar was somewhere. I think it was in Haiti. And I said, Mr. Ambassador, with all due respect, and you know the powers the ambassador has, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, you know what? He's in Medellin. We're close. He said, if you don't get on the plane, he says, I'm going to kick you out of the country. So, you know, I I lost my argument. So, But I'm glad that Steve was, was there. And the guy who tells me when I get to Miami, the informant's on the phone, and he looks at me and says, Javier, they just killed Pablo Escobar. That was my uh, my news to Escobar. No shit. What was yours? Well, for me, it was I was um, in Medellin that day, and and I was, actually I was over talking to the Delta and the, the SEAL Team Six guys mm -hmm. in their room. But it, it, you know they looked right out on the quad, and I, you can see the executive staff rushing over to the colonel's office. Um, and in police work, we call that a clue. So I was following up on that clue to find out what was going on. And when I walked into the colonel's office, we had a good enough relationship with him that he, you know, he motioned me to come on in and, and listen to what was going on. Mm. And that's when his son, Lieutenant Martinez, so you had mm. Colonel Hugo Martinez was our boss. Then his son, Lieutenant Martinez, is the guy that actually found Pablo Escobar mm. that day using radio mm. directional finding equipment. So, you know, the other, the Lieutenant colonels and the majors are whispering to me what's going on. And uh, you can hear Colonel Martinez telling him, listen, surround the place secure it don't let him get away we're loading up the troops well our our troops were 600 police officers Oof. that don't happen in just a, a minute or two you know you got to yeah. assemble everybody <laughs> issue weapons assignments get the trucks out all that stuff so in the meantime they went ahead and hit the place and uh the delta guys they they really took on a strong training role down there mm. and I, I gotta tell you you know, regardless of what anybody else thinks, I love those guys, whether you're SEAL Team 6 or mm. you're Delta. Mm. Everyone we've met, I have the utmost respect for. You know, when we do our shows, we tell the world, if I, if we're ever kidnapped, that's who we want to come and get us because we've seen what they can do. Yeah. I mean, they are that good. So yeah, there's somewhere around our office we have a bin Laden uh, target, pistol target with Rob O'Neill's signature on it, the guy that killed bin oh, Laden. Wow. So we're yeah. a big fan oh, cool. of we're a big fan of Dev Grew and, and everybody else. But you're right. If you see tier one operators getting spun up it's probably a good idea to pay attention because some shit oh, man that, they don't really get spun up for no reason in our book they're the studs of the world mm -hmm. so anyway um you know it went down and the next thing you hear is uh, a major that's leading the operation comes up on the radio and he says hey viva colombia pablo escobar's dead mm -hmm. now if you watch the narco series it shows that i was on the riff when he was killed that's not true i was back to base i rode out with colonel martinez after the fact mm -hmm. so the, I guess the cool thing about it was, well, there's a couple of things. One is the Colombian National Police deserve all the credit because they took their country back from that piece of crap, mm. right? Uh, the gringos, as much as we participated, they deserve the lion's share of the credit, and we're glad that it happened that way. Um, the second thing is I used to carry a camera everywhere I went. When we're on, If we're out on mountain operations, mm. flying around in helicopters, whatever it might be, I always had a camera. So we were able to capture the photographs that day, which is what we use in our shows now, you know, when we're on the road. And because we took the pictures, they're ours. <laughs> because it's ownership, you know, we don't have to give anybody's permission. Um, which is a big deal these days. Yeah, you own the rights to those pictures? Uh, sorry? You own the rights to those pictures? Mm. Well, we own the pictures, but they've been published so much on the internet, we don't publish them. Yeah, they're you know, fair we use gotcha. gotcha. They're everywhere. So, you know, we don't, we don't fuss anybody when they use them. But once I got there and was, you know, saw the scene and, and of course my job was to confirm that's Pablo Escobar. Mm -hmm. And I got on the roof with him and, and you've seen the, the photographs of mm -hmm. us standing around and we're holding him up like we've been deer hunting that day. And <laughs> uh, it's, it's not a picture I'm, I'm really proud of, but I'm not sorry that it happened either. You know, you got caught up in the moment with the Columbia national police. We'd <laughs> seen so many of our friends be murdered. We went to a funeral one time that had eight Columbia police officers in mm -hmm. it all were killed in one operation you know so you you get a little cold to things like that but then when the family showed up um this is a cool story so his mother and his sister show up 
and they're and I'm on the roof looking down at them. And for whatever reason, I got on a red shirt that day. It's just you know a horrible color. To, no, to it's wear like Tiger Woods on Sunday Woods. when Sunday comes around and Tiger knows he's going to win. Wears red, it's right? Victory Sunday. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm on the roof watching, and finally the sister says, "I want to see Pablo Escobar. If you say you killed him, well." The bodyguard, when he was shot, fell off the roof and was laying on the ground. Mm. So she kind of elbows her way over there, you know, and she looks down and sees it's not Pablo. Mm. She's She starts calling the cops, everything but cops. I mean, she's calling them every name in the book. You're inept. You're incompetent. You should be fired. You should go to prison. That's not Pablo, Pablo Escobar. You killed an innocent man. Blah, blah, blah. And they just let her go on. Finally, when she ran out of steam, they looked at her and said, hey, look up on the roof, bitch. <laughs> well, she did. And her reaction is what confirmed. I mean, I... I I was, you know, 99.9% .9 sure it's Pablo Escobar, but her reaction confirmed it for me. But then after that happened, I, one of the Lieutenant colonels I got with him and, and they took me back to the base because we just didn't want the focus to fall on the United States. We wanted the focus to stay on the Colombian national police because of what they did. I mean, they suffered so many losses. Uh, they dedicated they they have some of the most professional police officers we've ever worked with. And you talk about guys that can get the job done. These guys could get, could do that. They fit in that category. Did you guys go out that night and celebrate? I'm always curious when something like that happens. And we've had Rob O'Neill on the show a million times and uh, other people. I always ask them, do what you did that night? Did you go out and celebrate? Most of them just say, ah, I just woke up in the morning and did, you know, same job I was always doing. Uh, but I, yeah. you have to imagine for somebody this big that you've spent this much time in your life and the focus of your life, you had to have done something, right? We went back to the base and, and they, a police base in Columbia is like a military base here in the United States. They tripled the guards on the perimeter. I mean, you're already sleeping with your gun, but you know, everybody was on pins and needles that night because we were expecting retaliation. Mm -hmm. Quietest night I ever spent in Medellin. Yeah, there was a, I'm sure there was a power vacuum after a guy that big goes out, right? I mean, everybody's scrambling to figure out who's going to take control of that shit. Yeah, and it, you know, it lasted for about a week or two mm -hmm. and then the Cali guys just <clears throat> took over. But the next day is when Javier was back and he flew in from Bogota to Medellin. He came into the base. They pick us up in the Huey gunships, brought mm -hmm. him over uh, a lot of high fiving and visiting. And then he and I headed back. It was a Friday night when we got back into Bogota, my wife and another agent's wife had already planned out this party in the DEA section. And we had pizza and beers. Um, my wife and I had already adopted our first daughter by then, but she knew it was going to be a party night. So we had a, we had our housekeeper spend the night to take care of the baby. Uh, we got home about 10 a.m. Saturday morning. It was an all-nighter. <laughs> there it is, finally. <laughs> when did, he, when I, did you guys do coke I or what? Back on a, <laughs> back on a, on a, from Miami to Bogota, the plane was full of news people that I had always seen on TV, you know, because it was they were covering the death of Pablo Escobar. Yeah. I just didn't say a word, wasn't supposed to talk to anybody. It was just Univision, you know, just – Everybody was on that flight coming to uh, Columbia to cover the story.